Free will is so played out. I keep exercising my so-called free will, and that chain of events leads me to standing in my kitchen at 1 a.m., biting into a frozen waffle like a sleepwalking squirrel. It's like, damn it, me and my series of bad decisions. Because nobody eats a half-frozen waffle in the middle of the night wearing nothing but an old Detroit Tigers hat because they made great choices. No, it's always a train wreck of events leading up to it. And me, I'm in charge of these decisions, okay? I'm not even qualified to run this toaster for the Egos, let alone my own life. Now that's why I say, let's import arranged marriages. It's one less unqualified decision to make, and unlike everything else in your life going wrong, you can actually blame somebody else. Ah, my parents basically sex trafficked me. That's a reasonable excuse right there. I'm in my 30s. It goes by quick. It seems like yesterday millennials were just starting to have children on purpose. <laughs> and now some millennials are in their second wave of divorces. Goes by quick. And the boomers, our parents, they hate how long we wait for marriage more than they hate us getting divorced, it seems like. They got all the good jobs right out of high school and said, hey, we can only afford four kids on this one single salary, so let's just have three and live at large. <laughs> and for their parents, it was different. We've all heard stories about someone's grandpa meeting their grandma because he kept showing up at her house until she finally agreed to go out with him. That's stalking. That's creepy. That's not romantic. That's how every true crime podcast story begins. Yeah, they were married for 60 years, but that's just Stockholm Syndrome with matching recliners. And then their kids, the boomers, they practically invented divorce. The 80s and 90s rolled around and they were just like, we don't have to do this anymore? See ya. So the boomers can't be mad when, when, uh, when millennials get divorced when they've had more rings than a shower curtain. <laughs> millennials, yeah, we're taking our time getting married because we don't even trust ourselves. Okay, most of us can't be trusted to pick the right avocado, let alone one person to spend every day with for the rest of the marriage until it 50-50 ends a divorce. <laughs> I mean, come on, what's the ratio to an entire Netflix series that you've committed to? Probably better odds than the marriage lasting. We can't even pick a movie without scrolling for 45 minutes. And you want us to pick a life partner? Again, that's why I think we should bring in arranged marriages. Those things end in death. The only way a successful marriage should end, right? We love saying, oh, marriage is forever, but divorce is way more forever. I mean, if you can't commit to the same $900 cell phone for more than two years because the new one is 10% faster, what are you gonna do when your partner gets 10% fatter? <laughs> Trade them in for someone with a more responsive touch? Doesn't lag in night mode? But we pick weird reasons like that to reject somebody that's otherwise great, okay? I knew a girl who dumped somebody because he, quote, kept too many things in his pocket. <laughs> now, believe it or not, she's always single. And I knew a guy who spent more time researching reviews for different kombuchas right in the grocery store than he did deciding which different woman to sleep with every other night for an entire summer. <laughs> I know, right? Gross. Kombucha. But we also pick stupid reasons to marry someone, like not wanting to grow old alone. But that would be awesome. It's like, bye honey, I'm going out for a few days to do whatever I want. And by honey, I mean the doorman, because now you're rich and have Carl the doorman. He doesn't get angry if you come home at 3 a.m. with a taco and a stray dog. We live in an era of extreme conveniences, you know? It's like, gonna order Grubhub for the third time this week because cooking my own dinner is for peasants. I may as well go turn butter in the woods. No potential spouse can live up to the same entitlement only given to royalty at one point. And remember that one king? He cut off his wife's heads when he was bored of them. 
But if we were to get on board with arranged marriages, what would millennial parents barter for the dowry? It's like, okay, I'll let my kid marry yours, but you have to give me your HBO password with all the add-ons for life. And I want vape juice and craft beer and all your furniture from Ikea when you're done with it, pre-assembled. And how do millennial parents figure out who has to pay the other? It's not defined by gender. I thought it was always the boy's family who has to pay the girls, but no. They have to decide some horrible calculation to determine which three-year-old is a better catch than who's two-year-old. Oh, look at my kid. He's good at Lego. And finger painting. And they're like, yeah, but he eats the paint. That's not vape juice material. They're arguing about which kid would be better at filing taxes and fixing the Wi-Fi while they both still think Play-Doh is a food group. You know, and if their kid ends up falling for someone else, too bad. It's like, I know you love Jessica, but her parents have a Hotmail account. We're here living in the future and doing arranged marriages now. Do you put two smart people together? No. It's one smart and one dumb, and the dumb's family is paying the vape juice. If we're doing arranged marriages, we're going to level the playing field here because dumb people will always find each other. It's like stupidity is some kind of contagious virus that pulls them together. Dumb people make more dumb people. If there's one thing they're good at, it's reproducing, right. If two morons that don't even know each other get trapped in an elevator, by the time they get rescued, there's a baby coming out with them. Okay, I'll give you a real example. The dumbest guy and the dumbest girl in my high school, they didn't know each other existed. It's like the school tried to keep them apart. But you can't contain the stupid virus. That's just denying science. And it will find a way. And by the time the rest of us have moved on and we're graduating college, they already had kids graduating kindergarten. Which, let's be real, is the highest level of education that family's gonna see. And dumb people always find each other. It's like they wake up one day and go, hey, you know what would make doing meth all day even better? A series of unplanned pregnancies. And the people, so the people subjected to arranged marriages, they have a similar thought process. The girls, they're like, I hope he's kind, funny, hardworking, likes dogs. Well, the guys are like, I hope she's not fat. <laughs> We're like that already with the Western version of arranged marriages, dating apps. It's arranged marriages, but with machine algorithms and data harvesting. <laughs> Women meeting a guy on it are like, I sure hope he doesn't take me out in the woods and turn me into a Wikipedia article. <laughs> it's true, you never know these days. And the guys, they're like, I hope she's not fat. <laughs> we all got that one friend with unrealistic standards, right? The kind of guy who declares no fat chicks for his potential partner. All while he's camped out in his parents' basement, you know, saying, screw you, mom and dad, as soon as I'm 30, I'm out of here. His list of deal breakers are as long as a CVS receipt and just as unrealistic. All while his gut hangs over his World of Warcraft keyboard, a subscription he could barely afford, with rent money being a mythical concept. And hey, that's his right. Everyone's entitled to their own personal brand of deal breakers, even if it means they die alone. You know what though? If you're constantly digging for faults, like keeping too many things in your pockets, you're gonna find something. And as time goes on, those pockets are going to start to look pretty empty and you'll be on team arranged marriages. <laughs> know your worth, they say. Only the best for me. Which is fine, because you're the one who has to spend the next two to three years with that person. <laughs> but know your worth works both ways. Sure, you have every right to call leaving a wet towel on the floor a red flag. But understand that so is you getting wasted at their staff Christmas party and fighting someone who looked at your partner, quote, with their eyes. <laughs> and these are the kind of people who one day eventually say, I've decided it's time for some professional help. I've been getting therapy. And what you want to say is, oh, it's about time. 
But what you really say is, oh, g- good. Is it online? Do you go in person? Or, and they go, it's a psychic. <laughs> but th- this one's for real. I give somebody a ton of cash in a McDonald's bag and they lay some magic cartons on a table and do therapy. <laughs> and they tell me nothing has ever been my fault. And you go, eh? And they say, oh, it's really working. I am fully committed. I've been going to so much of my therapy lately that now I can't afford groceries. <laughs> now, as their friends, we're trained to give the worst advice possible, which is to placate them so we're supportive and not hurting their feelings. And as their friends, we have to pretend that psychic powers are just their personal beliefs, which is really not any more crazy than any other belief system. <laughs> or we tell them the truth, but then we're not their friend anymore. It's a paradox. If you be a good friend and say, listen, these people are con artists and they're taking advantage of you. They should be in jail. None of this has any scientific merit. And frankly, you're kind of stupid for giving them your time and money. (laughs) Boom, you're cut out of their life with the exact same scripted performance. You know this one. It starts with some cryptic Facebook post with the exact same formula. It starts like this. Cutting out negativity in my life. (laughs) Which is you. Getting rid of toxic people is the first step towards healing. That's also you. You're toxic for telling them that the psychic is manipulating them. I only have room for positive energy in my life. Which means, don't tell me I'm wrong even though I'm 100% ruining my life and the lives of those around me. (laughs) And finally, the crown jewel of this opera, karma will get you. Only actual insane people say that. Nobody's ever read somebody's post-threatening karma on another person and thought, hmm, well, there's a well-adjusted adult. (laughs) Everyone thinks you're referencing karma as yourself, coming back to cut off someone's face and wear it as a mask. (laughs) What you're really saying is, someone didn't take my emotional abuse with a smile on their face and I'm mad about it. (laughs) Now, one hand, These people are the perfect argument for arranged marriage because even that person gets to have someone forever. But on the other hand, they're the perfect argument against it because some poor person is stuck with dealing with that forever. (laughs) But you gotta watch out for those red flags. And one that's always overlooked is not just the revolving door of serious romantic partners someone might have, but also platonic interpersonal relationships. Their best friends are always people they just met You know, you start seeing someone and they introduce you to their best friend and you ask how they met and they say something like, oh, uh, we met when they were comforting me in an alley behind a bar when I was puking raspberry vodka in my hair and crying in my phone and peeing my pants. (laughs) And you go, oh, oh, wow, you must have been young and have known each other for a long time. And they go, oh, no, uh, that was a month ago. We've just been inseparable ever since. Red flag. (laughs) Use your brain. Remember the math problems in school? One train is headed towards another on the same track at 100 miles per hour. Both conductors are drunk on boxed wine and codependency. Now calculate how stupid you are for sticking around after the first date. (laughs) Imagine the families of these people. Mom and Dad, I've met the one. And they're like, didn't you just have a the one? What about that other the one? And they're like, no, 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 this one is an Aquarius. Which means when the donkey tide rises and they leave their shoes too close to the door, I need to scream at them with a switchblade threatening to cut off their face and wear it as a mask. (laughs) And they know I probably won't do it. It's just my zodiac sign and there's nothing I can do about it. By the time the third date rolls around, this, the one, is already the last one and they're on to the next one. (laughs) Now in contrast, I know a girl who got married the day after her 18th birthday because religion. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. She wanted to get a little wild in the pants, but couldn't because this Jesus fella or whoever says you can't get your titty smacked around by anyone other than your husband. (laughs) So you got to go sign a legally binding contract with the government or you're a sinner. Now that's basically an arranged marriage right there. small town, met in church, it was either that guy or his brother, who eats paint. (laughs) 
So it's the same as an arranged marriage, but she ended up getting divorced at 19. <laughs> the reality is, picking a partner for yourself is a lot like bringing something into the pawn shop. You rarely get what you're looking for, but you take it if you're desperate enough. 